Hi, my name is Brandon Greasley. I'm a high school math teacher, and we're looking at compound interest uh, when you have different compounding periods that are not just one year in length. Uh, so what we had before was that the uh, future value was equal to the present value times 1 plus the rate as a decimal, the annual percentage rate, uh, raised to an exponent, which was the amount of time, the number of years that were passing. And this is important that the rate and the time are both in the same sort of units, the annual rate and a number of years. So future value, or the amount at the end of all of the, uh, when all the compounding is finished, the principal, or the present value, the rate of interest, and the number of years. But, so that's, that's when everything is all just in years. You know, you compound every year, and you earn uh, an annual amount of interest. But, in real life, usually what happens is something slightly different. Uh, usually what happens is um, the interest is compounded a little bit more frequently, although the rate is still listed as an annual rate. So this is the slightly modified version of this formula. Everything's the same except for right here. We have an extra variable, n, and we put it in two places. So n is the number of compounding periods per year. And uh, the, so this small change then is to divide the rate you know, as a decimal by the number of times the rate is used in a year, and then the exponent is multiplied by that number of times, so every year it happens that many times. So as a, here's, let's do an example to see how this works. So suppose that you invest uh, $1,000 at a rate of 7% per year. compounded, this is the language that you usually see, compounded semi-annually uh, for four years. So let's look at all the details here. Uh, so I'm going to just write our little formula off to the side here again so I still have it on the screen for you. So the values that we have from uh, this description here. We, uh, we want to find out what the, the final value is, or the future value. So A is the future value, that's what we're trying to find. P, the principal, or the present value, the amount at the beginning, is 1,000. R is 7%, or we will write it as a decimal, 0 0.07. N, well, we're compounding semi-annually, that is the number of compounding periods per year is 2. 2 times per year is semi-annually, and uh, t is the number of years, in this case that's 4 years. Okay, so let's fill this all in. We have a is equal to 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 2, and the exponent then is 2 times 4. All right, let's see what this does then, how this changes things. 1,000 times, let's do what's inside the brackets here first. 1 plus, this is 0 0.035, and then we'll be raising it to the power of 8. So you see what this does is this has uh, cut the rate in half, but we're going to be using it twice as many times. So that's 1,000 times. Well, let's see what this is here. We're going to take uh, 1.035, that's these two things added together, and we're going to raise it to the exponent 8. Press equals, and I get about, I'm going to put a little dot there, about 1.3168. Okay, it's approximately, now let's do a couple more decimal places. And so to finish that off then, I'm going to finish that multiplication, multiply by 1,000, and I get $1,316 and about 81 cents. So, effectively what we've done is cut the rate, divided it by uh, the number of compounding periods in a year, and then we've raised the, 
we've raised this expression up to that many more. We've multiplied the year by the number of compounding periods. So here we have four years. We compound twice a year, but only by half as much. Okay, let's do another one, similar one. So let's say you have a loan for, um, uh, your loan charge is 5% per year. And it's uh, compounding monthly, so more frequently. Um, if you borrow, uh, I don't know, let's say ten thousand dollars. How much? will you owe after three years? And this is assuming you don't pay off anything in the middle. You just borrow the money, wait three years, and then give it back plus the interest. Okay, well, let's uh, write our formula again. A is P, the principal, times 1 plus R over N to the NT, N times T. Again, let's look at our uh, description to see what we have here. We're trying to find, again, trying to find the amount, the final value. So this is equal to the principal, 10,000, times 1 plus the annual rate is R. That's 5% per year, written as a decimal, 0 0.05. We divide it by how many compounding periods there are in a year. It's compounded monthly, 12 months in a year. Sorry about that. 12 months in a year, and we raise it to the power of n times t, 12 times a year, times 3 years in this case, so that'll be 36. Okay, so 10,000 times, okay, this is going to be a little bit gross, because watch what happens here. When I type this in, 0 0.05 divided by 12, that's not a very nice number. So we could turn this into some kind of fraction. What's actually, the? I think, the easiest way to deal with this? is to type it into your calculator, 0 0.05, divide it by 12, press equals, you have this decimal on there already, lots of decimal points, then add 1, plus 1, okay, that's this expression in here as a decimal, and then raise it to the power 36. So I'm going to write it down here with a little approximately, 4, 1, 6, 6, 6, and actually it's repeated and then raise that to the power of 36. So I have this gigantic number here ready to use, and I'm going to just raise it to the power right now, 36, and there's that expression. So I'm going to write this down here, 1.1614722. This is approximately equal. And there's some more decimal places after that. Oops, sorry about that. And then to finish this off, I'm going to multiply that by 10,000, which is just 1. 1614.72. Okay, so that's the uh, dollar amount then, $11,614.72. So after three years, uh, I started with $1,000. I'm going to owe an extra uh, about $1,600 in interest. Okay, let's do one more. And some, the hardest part of this probably is just uh, making sure you know what the different compounding period lengths are. Uh, so let's say you have a credit card. Credit cards notoriously charge um, a lot of interest. Let's say you have one that charges 18.8% APR. That's the annual percentage rate. And you read the fine, fine, fine print and you see that it is compounded daily, which means every day it's going to um, charge you a little bit more and it's going to adjust then for how much money you owe every day. So there's no sort of sneaking around um, borrowing money and getting rid of it again. Uh, so what is the effective, this is a special term, what is the effective uh, annual percentage rate? And that means that it's uh, compounded annually. So it means then, let me just finish writing this here. 
this term effective APR that's the same as saying well if I if I had a different credit card that didn't compound daily but just compounded annually uh, what would its rate be if it was charging me the same amount what's the equivalent rate compounded annually so w the way we figure this out then we we don't really even need a specific um, uh, beginning amount and principal sorry uh, f final amount and principal well, all we need to do is fill in sort of the middle numbers and I'll show you what happens so this is uh, 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compounding periods um, times the number of compounding periods times the number of years okay so we know that that's P times 1 plus okay so we can fill in some of this 18.8 percent is 0 0.188 the number of compounding periods in a year is about 365. We can fill that same number in here, 365 in a year, and I want one year. So what we're going to say is how much interest, uh, or, or as a um, this ratio here, how much interest are we going to have in a year? That'll tell us what the effective rate is. So P times what? Well, again, grabbing the calculator, this one's a little bit hard to type in, so let's do it like this, 0 0.188 divided by 365 equals, this is a pretty small number, right? It's uh, 0 0.05 percent, so 0 0.0005. To that we add 1, this gives us the value inside of our bracket here. So it's a pretty, pretty close to 1, but we're going to use it a whole lot of times, 365 times. We'll raise it to the power of 365. Okay, so this is about 1.20678, let's say. So, after one year, we have go from whatever uh, principal value we have to something that's a little more than 20% bigger. So the annual, the effective, I should say, the effective, sorry, the effective APR is about 20.678 percent. If you had another loan that was compounded annually at 20.678 percent, that's the same as one that's charging 18.8 percent compounded daily. Thanks.